stage is San Diego Congressman Daryl Issa, who stepped in it when, as chair of the House Government Oversight Committee, he scheduled a hearing on the federal health care mandate, a mandate that would make employers offer contraception with no copay as part of health insurance benefits. Catholic institutions objective. ISIS panel on whether that mandate infringed on religious employers produced howls of derision when the panel turned out to be all male. You probably know what happened next once Rush Limbaugh got into the fray. So, Elisa, let's pick it up from there now. <laughs> I'm sure our people at home have heard about this already. We have conservative uh, radio host Rush Limbaugh calling a Georgetown University student a slut because she supports access to birth control. How's this going to play out, do you think, in the Republican uh, well, nomination? Well, it's been playing out, Joanne. It's been playing out um, very loudly and very interestingly, I think, to everybody who's watching. Um, what's been interesting is, well, a lot of conservatives object to the mandate that religious institutions may have to pay for contraceptive coverage. Of course, Obama kind of cycled that back and he said, okay, you don't have to pay, but you have to be able to refer people to another institution that will provide that kind of coverage. But that's seen widely as an assault on religious liberty and perhaps a constitutional issue. Um, but Rush Limbaugh took it to a whole different level, which is what was really interesting. So he was really attacking this woman for sexual promiscuity. And what has been again, interesting, is that the, the Republican nominees or the Republican campaigners for the uh, Republican nominee for president haven't denounced him. They basically didn't like the way he put it, but they were kind of locked, stop, they went along with him in terms of criticizing her for her sexual, her so-called sexual promiscuity. And I think that has been very shocking to a lot of women, uh, women who, you know, I, I have to admit, I have practiced birth control in my life, so <laughs> oh maybe, my you, know, may, you know, maybe I'm biased on this, but I mean, the idea that by practicing birth control that you are suddenly, you know, a slut or a whore or that you are sexually promiscuous does not track for most American women. So I, I think there's a shock factor that, they, that she is being attacked and that people are not, you know, coming down on Rush Limbaugh like a ton of bricks, like, you must be kidding me. Well, the other surprising thing in this debate in this day and age is that when women are speaking about access to birth control they're often saying well this is a health issue and that you know women take birth control for other reasons other than for birth control and, and that seems somewhat surprising that that you know women still feel like we have to kind of say that um, in, in in supporting this well and they do because look at who's controlling these discussions it's a bunch of men um, th that was one of the things that ISO was most heavily criticized for. It was a, whole, a panel of, an, of all men. Um, when you have TV stations up there talking about it, it's all men. All the candidates running for president are all men. And I thought um, Elisa brought up a great point that when you heard um, Gingrich and Santorum talk about uh, Limbaugh's comments, they actually were defending him, saying that it was the elite media that was jumping on him. And so it really shows you, I think, um, really how uh, socially conservative uh, the the uh, Republican Party is right now, and how much that's actually driving the presidential race. Which was it was shocking to me that we were uh, sort of talking about these sort of social issues that I think a lot of people thought we'd moved past. Well, and I think it's very it, it is a strange thing. It's it's an easy thing I think for men, whether it be Newt Gingrich or Mitt Romney or anybody, to basically say, you know, women shouldn't practice birth control. What well, actually they're not saying there. They're saying we shouldn't pay for birth control. Mm -hmm. But I think you know. In, in their could lives, be the same thing, depending on your situation, right? And there's there's a number of people. Santorum, I think, is one who who believes in the in the rhythm method as opposed to using any kind of medical means to to family to plan your family. But I think that it's the women in their life are all practicing birth control, so they can get out there and they can make pronouncements on this. It's a little bit more difficult, I think, for women to come out against this. So where are the women? Yesterday there was a very small uh, demonstration. It was uh, International Women's Day in in San Diego. Not a lot of women showed up. Is this just, you know, do we have a whole generation of young women who take this for granted? Where are, where are absolutely, the women? Absolutely, absolutely. Women, it's not, it's not just our generation that takes it for granted. It's a younger generation. It's all the women that have come up in the last 50 years. We do take it for granted. And I think that there's a great deal of complacency about where women have come to. I think if you look back 50 years where we were in 1965 when birth control was legalized to today and the amount of women who are running companies and who are judges and who are on the air and who are doing all kinds of important things. We've, there's been huge 
a, a, you know, just a tight sea change in terms of women's role in society. So we do take it for granted. And I think what's going on right now is a fabulous wake-up call. Because I think that if, if you start, if, if somebody like uh, Rick Santorum becomes president and begins to restrict access to birth control, which, you know, is very possible in this world, I think that you'll see a lot more women on the streets. Okay, Elisa and Andrew, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you both for being here.